discussion. Uh, what we discussed some the results we have recently obtained in the consolidation of limits by using laser. These are the names of, of people who, who gave the contribution, gave the contribution to, this, uh, to this work. Uh, some of the results uh, uh, we present now uh, have been published in the March issue of Applied uh, Optics. Uh, so we can refer for further, for further details uh, on the paper. Uh, this is the outline of the talk. Uh, it's divided in four parts. And, uh, at the beginning, at the beginning, we, we will discuss the uh, interaction of laser photons uh, with uh, with textile. Uh, to discuss this interaction, uh, we must get into molecular details uh, of, of textiles. And here we see that uh, uh, most vegetable textiles are basically made by uh, cellulose. And uh, this is the chemical structure of, of cellulose, uh, which is uh, basically made by a chain, made by, say, 1,000 or 2,000, by 1,000 or 2,000 of, uh, of this structure. And uh, this means that if uh, a photon can break this one, this, uh, this part, which is basically carbohydrate, you obtain uh, sugar, you obtain glucose. The studies uh, of uh, the interaction of cellulose with uh, ultraviolet photons started uh, very early in the 70s, between in the region between 70 and, 70, and 60 and 70. And uh, mainly these studies were, were devoted to understand why uh, papers, book papers, were becoming yellow when exposed to sunlight. And uh, the main, uh, the main uh, process of interaction with the right of photons with, uh, with the cellulose uh, is uh, photolysis. Photolysis uh, is uh, a process by which a molecule, molecules are broken into smaller units uh, due to the absorption of the photons of light. Uh, here are some details. Uh, as, uh, this is a short summary of these studies. Uh, the strongest absorption is uh, for photons having a wavelength shorter than 200 nanometer. Uh, Albany groups and ketonic carbonyl are the main responsible for absorption. And the microscopic effect uh, may be bleaching or yellowing. But the most important point to be underlined is that ultraviolet photons, especially those uh, having a, a wavelength shorter than 300, 350 nanometers, uh, interact with matter in a, in a cold way. That means without important heating effect. On the contrary of infrared. That is, the ultraviolet photon break directly chemical, bar chemical bonds uh, uh, without dissipating the heat. Uh, actually, it may be that there are some secondary, second order effects uh, with, uh, with the heating, uh, but they become less and less important as the photon wavelength decreases. The condition for a photon to break, uh, to break uh, uh, a chemical bond is that uh, the energy of the single photons, note that the energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength, uh, is larger than the chemical bond energy. Here are some examples. For example, we use the, we see, we use the 308 nanometers that corresponds to 4 electron volt of energy, and they are able to break uh, single carbon carbon bonds uh, which have uh, a bonding energy of 3.6 electron volt. Uh, when you move to 193 nanometer photons, that is 6.4 electron volts, they are able to break carbon hydrogen bonds, which have a bonding energy between 4 and 4.5, and oxygen hydrogen bonds. The second part is 
uh, about the setup that we have used for the editing limit. This is the experimental setup. Uh, there is a laser. The laser beam, uh, in part, is intercepted uh, to monitor to monitor the uh, fluctuations between shots, the energy, and so on. Uh, the most part of the beam impinge on lens and is focused on the sample. And in order to change the fluence, that is the energy density, that is the number of photons per unit area, we move the target along the optical axis. And when the target is close to the focal plane, the energy density is maximum. When moving toward the lens, the energy density becomes smaller. I mean, it's clear the total photons are the same. What changes the area where photons uh, are, are, uh, are focused. This is a photograph of the experimental setup. We actually use two different lasers. One is Hercules, is a homemade, uh, homemade Exima laser, and the other is a commercial laser. Uh, Exima laser uh, emit uh, pulsed light, that is, uh, photons are in, in bars, and uh, each cluster has uh, a given energy, 6 joule in this case, uh, and 0 0.5 joule in this case, uh, have a given pulse duration, 120 nanoseconds in, with this laser and 30 nanoseconds with this laser, and uh, a time interval between shots, repetition rate, for example, 5 shots per second, or 50 shots per second. And of course, a wavelength, 308 in this case, 308 or 193 nanometer in this case. Uh, I remind you that one nanosecond is 10 to minus 9 seconds. That is uh, one billionth of second. Is, uh, is a duration well, which is uh, also difficult to be imaged. Here are some details on the linets we have used. Uh, I will call X and Y. They are different linen. One is brown, uh, raw linen. The other is uh, white, is a white linen. This is the absolute uh, reflective spectrum of absolute reflectance we have measured over the two linens. They look much different, probably because uh, in the case of linen X, uh, there are some, uh, some uh, brighteners uh, that have been used to make it white. And on the contrary, linen white is, uh, is, without, is without any, any treatment. And uh, here, is shown uh, the, the reflectance uh, as measured by Gilbert during the, uh, as a part of the Shroud Turing Research Project uh, on, on the Shroud. And you see that there is an almost perfect overlap of the reflectance with respect to the linear Y. Experimental results. Uh, we started to irradiate the linen with the long pulse with laser, that is with the 120 nanosecond laser. Uh, and we obtained uh, any result, no coloration. Uh, we tried uh, many different working points, but the results were absolutely negative. Except in one case, where we have observed, but only at the microscope, not, my, not from a from microscopic point of view, a dozer of red a colored uh, uh, palm sugar line. And then we changed the, we changed the, uh, uh, we changed the, the, uh, the, the laser system. We used the, the shorter pulse with a 30 nanosecond laser, uh, delivering the same number of photons like before, in the case uh, we were able to cover uh, uh, the dozen strand of, uh, of, uh, of limb, that is uh, 
we deliver the same number of photons, but in a time 3.6 times shorter. 3.6 is the ratio of the pulse with of the first laser with the second laser. And in this case, you will see we obtained a, we obtained a, a, a macroscopic correlation of limits. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't take the skill of, of Barry Schwartz. Uh, the real limit look a little different, but I have here the sample for people interested to see how they look really. This is a microscopy image of the same uh, linen wire uh, of the previous slide. And you see there is some uh, morphological change on the, on the threads uh, that is not, not very important, but anyway. There are some change. Um, this is the summary of experimental results as a function of intensity, laser intensity, and of the laser pulse width. We have only two laser pulse width, 30 nanoseconds here and 120 nanoseconds here. And you see we can draw a line which uh, separates this graph in two regions. One is uh, the so-called ablation region, that is a region where the, where the laser intensity is uh, too high. So we obtain some damage of the limit. And the second uh, region here, in which you may obtain uh, a macroscopic, uh, macroscopic correlation. This is uh, a uh, summary from a different point of view. Uh, this is an histogram which shows the coloration of linear and arbitrary units here as a function of the number of shots and in bracket the repetition rate. And uh, the two vertical lines divide uh, the histogram in three regions low intensity region, medium intensity region, high intensity region. And uh, the horizontal line is a boundary between damage region and the coloration region or no results region, that is the smallest one. Uh, here is clear the threshold effect. The linear Y exposed to 50 shots at 50 Hz uh, is not colored when using a low intensity laser. And it is burned here when it, when it uh, is irradiated the same number of shots, same repetition rate at high intensity. Also, it's possible to, to see there are some cumulative effect. For example, both the linen here are almost not colored, uh, irradiating with 100 shots at medium intensity, but the 100 shots are delivered in two parts, 50 pause, pause, and then another 50. On the contrary, 100 consecutive shots can color the linen for the same repetition rate, the same laser intensity. What's about the coloration depth? Uh, these are a single thread of linear Y and X. And you see the, the, the linear, the, the, the thread are colored only when exposed to laser light. Uh, and not in the region that are covered by another thread. This means uh, ultraviolet light cannot pass through the single thread of uh, linear. And here is a cross section of linen X. You may see that there is almost 25% uh, of uh, fibrils uh, that are covered. Sorry. That are covered in the, in the, in the cross section of the, of the chart. It is, of course, too much for our purpose, but we will see how we can improve this result. Here are the results of the uh, uh, refrigerant measurement. Uh, this is a fiber of linen X. Here is a not irradiated region. Here is the irradiated region. This part is a, is a larger here, and this part is a larger here. The irradiated part show the typical kink band and uh, uh, the at the location of defect, as expected 
uh, after the interaction of UV light with the, with the, with the factor. Then we have uh, tried, we have cut half of lemon irradiated below threshold, that is uh, with an intensity, laser intensity, which is not sufficient to give uh, macroscopic coloration. And uh, this part was heated, uh, was heated 15 seconds at 190 degree Celsius. And after heating, it appears a uh, color corresponding to the laser spot. In fact, this heating produces dehydration that simulates uh, aging and colors the fiber which were prepared by the laser pulse. But the most interesting point is the same sample one year later. You see that even the not heated part shows now color. So the UV photons in practice have broken some chemical bonds inducing a slow dehydration and then coloring after a relatively long time. And to our knowledge, uh, this is the first direct evidence uh, of latent image in linen after laser irradiation. Then we move to a different wavelength, to a shorter wavelength. Bas basically to improve uh, the depth of coloration, because you know that the shorter the wavelength, the shorter is the penetration depth in any material. And uh, we, here we have faced uh, a new effect, that is, uh, in the same laser spot, we have uh, the presence of uh, all the three possible effects, ablation, bleaching, and coloration. How is possible? Here, here is uh, uh, the exolines of the intensity of the laser spot. So in the central part, which is the more intense part of the laser, we have ablation. When the intensity is decreasing, at a given point, we, have, we obtain the bleaching. And uh, with the further decreasing, we obtain a correction. <coughs> so the main problem is that the laser spot has not a uniform uh, spatial distribution of photons. But this is the same not homogeneous spatial distribution we have used for the for the for the for the radiation of 308 nanometer. That means in this case the uh, the working point, the optimum working point is much narrower than before. It's much more difficult to find the optimum working point. Here is the same effect in a much shorter scale. Uh, this is a, a fiber of limb. And you see here we have a region with a heavy, with a heavy uh, ablation, uh, another region with uh, ablation. Then there is a coloration, surface coloration, and then there is uh, 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 some kink bands that are evidenced only in cross polarization and are of course not visible, not visible uh, for normal illumination. And finally, there is the not affected. The, not affected so. <coughs> Here there is a comparison of the coloration depth between the photons at 193 nanometer and the photons at 308 nanometer we have seen before. And uh, you see that the improvement uh, is impressive. Here we have about 5% of the diameter. Here we have about 25% of the diameter. So here we are at about 20 micron penetration depth, and here we, here we are at about 80 micron uh, penetration depth. So in this case, we obtain a really very, very thin correlation. We are going to the end. Uh, just to summarize, we have shown that uh, nanosecond pulse duration with a laser beam can color a very thin depth on the surface of the moon. The coloration is permanent. After many years, they are still, they are still covered. 
and uh, it can be achieved uh, in a very, very narrow range of photon parameters. And this is uh, uh, absolutely an unusual situation with respect to the common fields of laser coloration of the textiles. Uh, we have shown that the shorter the wavelength of the laser and the thinner the color depth, but at the same time, the narrower the range of suitable laser parameters. We have, we have obtained some latent images that appear one year after laser radiation that at first did not generate a clear image. So these are some conclusions that mainly comment the fact that uh, in our results uh, shows that in principle a short directional burst of ultraviolet light, light may have uh, played a role in the coalition of the shell. <coughs> These results are compatible with the two hypotheses of image formation that have been formulated in the past. One is based on the radiation in the ultraviolet spectral region, the other is the ultraviolet photons generated by corona effect. But we have to point out that in any case, the UV, the total UV radiation power that is required to image the whole body is an impressive number. It's here. It's 2.7 times 10 to the 11 bath. And I can tell you that it doesn't exist any laser in this world that is able to deliver such high intensity or, say, electrostatic generator for the corona discharge. Uh, I would like to finish with, uh, uh, with paying a tribute to the Pope of John Paul uh, for, for his comment on uh, the shroud that was made uh, uh, in 1998. Thank you very much for your attention. He has a website, uh, Bible Discussion.